Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Continuing with our WinLink series today, uh, let's take a look at a few different things. First of all, let's take a look at creating shortcuts uh, that we can use inside the GUI of the PAT mailbox. Let's also take a look at connecting to mesh post offices. And finally, we're going to take a look today at auto starting PAT when we boot up our Raspberry Pi. Now, in case you stumbled upon this video first, I'll leave a link uh, to the first video in this series right up in the top corner, and I'll also put a link to it in the description below. If you're following along in the video series, uh, right now you should be at the point where you have rig control running, you should have PAT installed and configured, and you should also have RDOT running. So let's jump right in and take a look at getting one of the shortcuts working in our GUI. So the first thing we're going to need is a station to connect to. Uh, we'll need its call sign and we'll need the frequency of that station. So back to the winlink.org webpage that we was working with in the last video, I went ahead and brought up the same station, KX4Z, uh, out of Florida. Uh, and recall from the last video, uh, the frequency right here is the center frequency. To get the dial frequency, you need to subtract 1.5 kilohertz. So the call sign is KX4Z, and our dial frequency will be 7102. So let's head back to the terminal and get that shortcut configured. Back inside of the terminal, uh, we want to head to the PAT configuration file, so that's just PAT configure. That brings us back into our configuration file. Right here inside the window is our connect aliases. This is what populates the drop down menu inside of the PAT mailbox. So first thing we want to do is head over to the end of the telnet line and add a comma. Now one note here, if you get the syntax wrong inside this file, PAT will not start correctly. So make certain that you've got the syntax correct inside of, uh, inside of this file. So first thing we'll do is add a comma there. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our station information here. So quotation marks. Call sign was KX4Z, another quotation mark, and a colon. We'll give it a space, a new quotation mark, and the protocol that we're going to use is RDOP. So RDOP, colon, and three forward slashes. Then we need the call sign of the station we're trying to connect to. So that's KX4Z again question mark freq equals 7102 for our frequency Oop, 7102 for our frequency and then a closing quotation mark now notice at the end of that line there is not a comma the very last line does not get a comma at the end of it so what we've got here the first time we said kx4z that's the name that's going to show up in the drop down inside of the PAT Connect mailbox. Uh, the rest of this tells it what protocol, what station, and what frequency we're connecting to. So let's go ahead and exit out of this with Control X, uh, Y to say yes, and enter. And that brings us back out. So let's go ahead and get PAT started. PAT HTTP. And We'll move over to our browser. Now that we're inside the PAT mailbox, if you click Action and Connect, right here where it says Select the Alias, you can click the drop down and you'll see KX4Z right here. Now, uh, remember that was the first time that we typed KX4Z in the quotation marks in the configuration file. We could change that name to be whatever we wanted it to be. But once you select this, it automatically selects our Transport enters the target uh, call sign of the station we're trying to connect to and enters the frequency uh, for, the, for the rig. And that's all there is to adding a new station to your drop-down menu here. 
Now let's take a quick look at how to get a mesh post office configured. Here in Middle Tennessee, we've got an extensive mesh network set up. One of the advantages that we can uh, use with a mesh network is we can create WinLink post offices. Those WinLink post offices that are on the mesh, we can actually have a 5 megabyte file size limit for attachments instead of the 120 kilobit limit that you're restricted to when running over RF. So we utilize those quite, uh, quite frequently here in Middle Tennessee. So let me show you how to set that up real quick. We're going to come back down under the connect aliases again. And we'll put a comma here at the end of this line and start a new line. On this new line, we'll give it the name of our post office, that's W4CAT, and then I put dash PO just so I know that it's a post office box. We'll give it the colon, quotation mark. All right, telnet colon forward slash forward slash W4CAT colon CMS telnet at and we're going to give it the IP address of the computer that's hosting the WinLink post office. So in my case, that's 10.16.153.60. And we need to give it the port number that the mailbox is listening on. In my case, it's 8772. And then we give it a forward slash WL2K and a closing quotation mark. And we'll go ahead and exit out of that and save our changes. And let's head back in to the PAT mailbox. All right, inside of the PAT mailbox, we'll go ahead and click the Action and the Connect button. From our drop-down alias now, we'll select the W4CAT post office. And we'll go ahead and click the Connect button. You'll be able to watch down here in the window and see that it's going to make that connection. We had no messages and it's disconnected. So that's all there is to it to getting a mesh post office configured inside of PAT. So the last thing we want to take a look at today is auto starting PAT when we boot up our Pi. To do that, let's move over to the etc directory and then we'll have to use the sudo command sudo nano rc.local. That's going to bring us up to this file here. Now, just before exit zero, we're going to enter a bit of information. Now, I'm just going to paste this in. I will also leave this information in the description below uh, so that you can copy and paste it as well if you'd like to. Uh, but what's going on here, the first thing we're doing is we're starting rig control with this first command here. Then we'll tell it to wait a couple of seconds before we start the RDOP command. For this one, you've got to run it as user pi, so we just uh, we tell it su pi dash c, and then the command uh, to start RDOP. Now make sure that you've got your path set correctly. If you've been following along on this uh, on this video series, then this should be the correct path for you here. We'll tell it to sleep for a couple of more seconds, and then again as user pi, we're going to tell it to start pat with the pat http command. And that's all there is to getting that one going. So we'll go ahead and exit out of that. And that should have you up and running. I hope this video series has helped you get Pat configured and running on your Raspberry Pi. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below and we'll answer them the best that we can. Until next time.